These are habits that rich, successful women, people who are achieving their dreams, achieving their goals have. I personally love a good self-help book and these are habits that have stood out among people, not just women, who have managed to accomplish a lot in life, become very successful, and also keep and manage the money that they have. After this video, you're gonna start to recognize when you or someone else does the opposite of these habits or is not doing these habits and you will start to see how it might be negatively affecting you. I was inspired to do this video because you guys always like the videos I do on like how to look expensive and how to look like you've, you're have you put together and you have it together. So I thought this would be a fun one to do. That and I've also been watching a lot of Graham Stevenson and reading The Motley Fool and trying to figure out a way to take advantage of the recession. Because if you've looked at a lot of wealthy people in the world, a lot of them have created a lot of wealth during recessions. I've actually kind of come full circle with all of this and I'm basically doing the same strategy I've always done. <laughs> I'll share that with you at the very end in case anyone is interested. This video is also sponsored by Blue Land. I'm very excited to share with you what they have in just a moment. And now let's get started with the first rich woman habit. Rich and wealthy women tend to buy fewer but higher quality items. I know we've talked about that in some of my videos, but they're more so concerned with the quality of something rather than having 10 low quality versions of that item. Even if you're not in a position to buy high quality items, I feel like the goal should always be to buy the best quality you can and buy less. Your money is going to go further if you spend it on items that really will last you a long time rather than a whole bunch of cheap items that are gonna disintegrate in a couple months. The reason why this is important is because overall and in the long run, you actually spend less money on clothing and things when you really study the quality of something. And a woman who has a lot of money and money to manage and to keep, she's gonna make sure her money is spent on items that she's gonna keep for a long time and give her a lot of value. People who've been very successful in life and accomplished a lot are in the habit of looking ahead of them and in front of them instead of behind them and in the past. They see themselves in control of their own destiny and do not dwell on things that happen to them or negative circumstances out of their control. They don't give up on their dreams because of a few setbacks. On the flip side, people who are unsuccessful and have given up on their dream are often in the habit of blaming their lack of success or their lack of money on someone else, some outside circumstance, and see wealth as something that just randomly happens to someone out of pure luck rather than something you have to work towards. They weren't born into the right family. Um, this happened to them. They aren't pretty enough. They aren't smart enough. They aren't tall enough. For every situation that people feel like is the reason why they aren't rich and wealthy, you can just look at history and you can find people who have had it way worse and have been very successful and done really well. J.K. Rowling could barely feed her family before the Harry Potter books took off. Susie Orman, she gives financial advice, used to live out of her van. Oprah Winfrey had a horrible, abusive childhood and she still managed to become one of the richest people in the world. When I read about people that have had it way worse than I have and accomplished so much, I'm like, why do I ever complain about anything? We cannot control what happens to us, but we can control what we do next and how we respond. Have you ever spent any time around any other humans besides yourself, like maybe kids? You get very aware of how much single-use plastic that we use. And being around kids, I'm also very aware of all the chemicals that I'm spraying around my children. <laughs> so I was so excited when Blue Land reached out to me. They have a solution to both of those issues. They have cleaning products that have ingredients that I can feel good about using around my children and my dog. And I love that I'm not constantly going through plastic bottle after plastic bottle and just being wasteful. So the way it works is they give you these little tablets that you put in their bottle with some water and you wait a little bit for it to dissolve and you're ready to use it. Two of the main things that I often am like, ugh, I'm using it on my baby, is um, <laughs> is hand soap. You know, I'll wash his hands with soap because he's a very messy child. And I'm like, what the heck am I putting on him? And then the other thing I'm concerned about is the spray cleaner I use to clean my countertops. So for me, it's super important that I feel good about the ingredients that are in the cleaning products that I'm spraying all around my family. And since I clean all the dang time, I go through <laughs> bottles of cleaning solution. And so to top that, I'm not constantly throwing away single use plastic bottles. You can actually take 20% off your entire order and this is already very affordable, so it's a very good deal. It's also good for a Christmas present. I will list all the information you need in the description box below and I'll list what I have, the products that I have as well. And um, let's continue. Our wealthy woman is going to invest in her physical and mental health. She exercises, she pays attention to what she's eating. They, remo 
They remove themselves from toxic situations or toxic friends. What in the heck, Cookover? Like I know he thinks he's protecting the house, but really it's probably the mailman out there. You have to take care of yourself before you can take care of anyone else. And if you are a mom or have ever been a mother or know a mother, you know what I mean. You can't really take care of your kids very well if you yourself feel run down and like you need a charge. Right, Grover? Right. Our successful woman is going to make herself a priority and make sure she takes the actions she needs to in order to feel the best that she can. When I tell you this next successful rich person habit, you're going to start noticing when either you or someone else does this, does not do this. People who are financially successful and manage their money well have a different language when it comes to money. They don't really talk about it very much unless they are specifically talking to someone about investments or something of that nature. They don't start casual conversations gossiping about how much they think someone paid for or something and, and they, they shouldn't have done that or they paid too much or criticize other people for what they're spending money on or have really negative words around money. They basically just see it as a way to get from point A to point B. They don't really see anybody else's money and what they do with it as any of their business. People who are not managing their money well will often have a negative mindset around money. They have negative words around money. They criticize other people or what they're spending their money on. Another habit of rich, wealthy, successful people is that they take pride in their appearance. So every time I do a video on like looking rich or wealthy or expensive or whatever, um, people like to comment like, I know somebody who lives in sweatpants and they're super rich or I know a woman who's really rich and she wears yoga pants all the time that is amazing honestly I bet you those yoga pants look real good on her and <laughs> they're probably a very high quality yoga pants but for rich wealthy women they usually want to look their best whether they're wearing yoga pants or a fancy dress and even people like Mark Zuckerberg the owner and the inventor of Facebook I mean he's a very, very rich person. And he famously wears a t-shirt and jeans every single day so that he can save his decision-making skills, which are limited every day, to things that are more important. However, I'll bet you a gazillion dollars when Mark Zuckerberg is going to his best friend's daughter's wedding or a black tie event or his mom's you know, brunch party, whatever it is, he's not wearing the t-shirt and jeans. He's probably got a really nice suit or something very nice that is tailor-made to him. It's very high quality that he wears to those events. And most wealthy women, they want to look good whenever they go places. And honestly, even these women that are dressing really casually, even if they are dressed really casually, it's usually pieces that fit them very well. They're higher quality pieces and they probably look really good on them. It's something they really, really love. If you're at Mark Zuckerberg's level of success, then you also should probably follow his strategy of wearing a t-shirt and jeans, but most of us are not. Rich people are in the habit of being selective about where they spend their money. They know where all their money is going. There are no surprises. They know where it's being spent and seldom will they spend it on frivolous things. What's funny is that a lot of people who want people to think that they're rich or they want to pretend they're rich will often spend a lot of their money on luxury items and fancy cars and brag about how much money they have. It's called keeping up with the Joneses as we've all heard that phrase. Wealthy people know that it's just as important to keep the money that you have as it is to actually make the money. People who are not managing their money very well often spend everything they make and are not investing in their future. So that's why you're able to hear about people who make like $10,000 a month but they're still living paycheck to paycheck. They're not managing managing it very well. Rich people are in the habit of failing a lot more than not rich people. There's not a single wealthy person that has become rich without failing a ton of times, embarrassing themselves, making terrible decisions, huge financial mistakes, falling flat on their face. But the difference is between the successful people and the people that end up just never amounting to what they want to amount to is that they keep going, they learn from those mistakes, they get back up, they just start again, and they keep going. This is literally the biggest lesson I've ever learned from reading about successful people is that they fail so much. And so it helps me because I make bad decisions and make mistakes all the time. Unsuccessful people are usually the ones sitting on the sidelines criticizing everyone who's out there trying to make things happen. If you're ever doing well for yourself and you're starting to like things are getting good and things are getting great and you have people come at you and start criticizing you, it's because they are mad that they are not doing it. But they stopped trying themselves. And ultimately it's because they don't believe they can, they don't have the confidence to actually put themselves out there, they're scared what everyone else will think, 
think they have a fear that is holding them back and it makes them feel more comfortable to sit back here and just criticize everybody over here, but really they're kind of miserable. If anyone's ever criticizing you because you're on your way up and you're doing really well, just know that they are not very happy with the position that they are in and that's why they're doing it. Another habit that rich people have is they say no a lot. They value their time. They say no to invitations that they don't wanna to go to that's not gonna be a benefit for them or is gonna take away from something else. Saying yes to something directly means that you are saying no to something else. If you say yes to all these volunteer things that you have to do in the evening hours, you're saying no to spending time with your family. If you're saying yes to a lot of things and you're feeling overwhelmed, that is a very big sign that you need to say no to a lot of those things. It's okay if it hurts the person's feelings, you really need to think about yourself. Think about filling up your cup so that you can help fill up other people's cups. But again, you can't if your cup is like, you know, all depleted and stuff and like got dust on it. Rich people value their time over most anything else. Another habit of rich, successful, wealthy people is that they pay themselves first. So with whatever money they make, at least a portion of it is invested in their future self. Most of the time, this is an automatic withdrawal into a high yield savings account or an investment account so that it's immediately taken out whenever it comes in. It's not sitting there where they have to manually put it into something. It's just taken out, it's not even there, and they live on the money that's left. Another habit of successful, rich, wealthy people that the unsuccessful, not rich, and not wealthy people definitely do not do is that they write down their goals. And piggybacking off that, there's no goal that's too big. They dream big. They also make sure that they are working towards those goals, which goes back to saying no to a lot of things that don't align with the process of where they're going. They also dream big. They don't ever say, oh, I could never do that. Instead, they say, why not me? They look up to others who came before them that did a lot more than they did, starting from a lot less, and they think, okay, if they can do it, I can do it too, and they start to make their plan. Our rich, wealthy, successful woman, she most definitely gives back. You don't normally hear about how much wealthy people are giving back or donating to charity because if they went around bragging about it to everybody, it would really come across as very tacky and our wealthy woman does not want to be tacky. Wealthy people often have charitable organizations, specific ones they donate to. A lot of times they sit on the boards of these organizations. There's a whole psychology that goes into this, but doing things for other people, even volunteering your time if you can't afford to give money to these organizations, it just, it does something to us where we feel better about the world, about life. We feel good about ourselves that we gave back to somebody else. We helped someone. It's like a cure for depression almost. So if you're ever feeling bad about yourself, go help someone else who's worse off than you. I promise you it's going to help. <laughs> Rich people read and educate themselves constantly. I'm always amazed when I hear about these millionaires and billionaires that say they read like a book a week. I'm like, how, <laughs> how do you have the time? But anyway, they don't believe that they know everything, even though they've done really well for, for themselves. They're constantly learning. So I love reading about, you know, people who have been successful and not necessarily like rich people, but I love reading about women who have gone through things and, you know, figured life out. Well, you know, part of life anyway. And the thing that I have noticed in all of these people, and I feel like no one really ever talks about this or maybe they do and I've missed it, but they're not driven by the money. They're not like, I want to be a millionaire no matter what the cost or no matter how I have to do it. They're very much driven by the process. They are not concerned with having having a Ferrari or anything like that. They are more interested in being successful, and pushing themselves and being ambitious. Someone who gets rich by a shady means ends up being rich and unhappy, whereas someone who gets rich by pursuing their passions and doing something they love and giving back and really, you know, just really being interested in the whole process is more likely to become rich and happy. Well, actually, you don't have to be rich to even be happy if you're pursuing things that, you know, bring you joy. That's the ultimate form of happiness, I think, anyway. So I hope you like those rich habits. I thought these were kind of important, and I feel like these are the ones that have spoken to me at in some point in my life um, whenever I've been terrible with money at lots of points during my life. Um, I've learned a lot from doing things the wrong way and trial and error and learning the hard way. So these are really interesting to me. I hope they're interesting to you. If you want to know my investment strategy, this is like so not exciting. It's not exciting at all. But whenever you research all these people who are like gurus, how to just set yourself up for, you know, 
success later on with investing, every single one of them are like, you're, it doesn't matter who you are, you are not going to beat the market. What that means is you need to invest in an index fund a little bit every couple weeks, maybe once a month, invest an amount, have it automatically invested every so often. So you are always buying into the market. Over time, nothing really beats that index fund. I know I'm probably saying this all wrong. I am not a financial advisor or planner. You gotta consult someone else before you do anything. I'm just letting you know what I do. Oftentimes when you invest in just a regular old index fund during a recession, there's been like 30, 40, 50 and 60% returns when there's a bull market again. I mean, it's kind of like, it's a, it's a real thing. I mean, it is an opportunity. If you do wanna do this, I don't know if this is still available, but um, Fidelity had a zero fund, fund, something like that. Look up Fidelity zero fund, but it's no fees, no brokerage fees, nothing like that in order to invest in some index funds and, um, I mean, it's just like a no brainer. So you could automatically take it out of your paycheck every week, just a little bit, whatever, you know, like 10% or 5% or $10 even, whatever you can and put it in there. So that over time you're building up wealth and you have that there for later on in life. So I've never done a video like this before and I hope I didn't like rub everybody the wrong way and you're like, oh my God, cringe. But I love learning about this stuff, all this self helpy stuff really fun. It's helped me a lot. Let me know what you think. You can always add some more tips too if you have any more to add. Um, thanks for sticking with me if you made it this far. <laughs> I really appreciate you and I will see you next time.